Hey guys, it's Kay from KS Anonymous and I am back today with another episode of r slash Tales from Tech Support. Never press the shiny red button. System upgrade turns into a robbery in progress. Back again for another tale of insanity and tech woes that dances on the border between stupidly impossible and yet somehow plausible. I was on my way to work tonight and had a pair of cop cars go flying past me and it reminded me of this story. This was back around early 2005-2006-ish. At this time, I had about 8 years of experience under my belt and I'm pretty confident in what I know and what I don't and the difference between the two. I've installed slash upgraded several network setups and phone systems by this point and I'm fairly confident I know how to pull cables and remove this old crap that has been dry rotting for years in the ceilings and walls. This particular job was a network upgrade to replace the old network drops and landline phone switch system and install IP phones along with a new network switch for the recent fiber upgrade they got. The network closet was a 4x4 graveyard filled with junk systems, two old phone punch down panels, dead battery backups, and the current systems I was replacing. This customer was in a small strip mall area that had nice high drop ceilings, so install and removal of the old garbage was fairly easy. Cut the old junk at the top of the wall, yank it back to the closet, cut it up top, pull the loose junk away from the old systems. I get all the old crap off the wall and load it into my vehicle to scrap slash recycle and started pulling the new cables. I got all the new cables pulled and punched down out in the office. I wanted to be out of the customer's way, so I decided to set up the new phones and run cables to all the new equipment before finishing the closet. I'm crawling underneath the counters and desks, organizing the system cables, my OCD couldn't let the rat nest alone, while pulling the new cables through. As I'm under the front counter, I come across a small box with a single red button. Hmm, what could this be, I wonder? I asked the owner if they knew what this curiosity was and they said they didn't know. I said it looks like a panic button to call the cops if you were getting robbed and asked if they had a system like that. To the owner's knowledge, they did not and I had everything out of the closet and nothing I pulled looked like a system like that. They're usually a wall-mounted metal box that's locked with wires running through metal conduit for protection. I asked if they wanted it left or pulled and they said pull it, so I unmounted it, yanked the wires back up through the wall, tossed a wire nut on each of the ends to be safe, coiled it up, and zip tied it to a support beam. Obviously, I had to press the big red shiny button before pulling it. It's against the law not to press it. I want to say about 10 to 15 minutes pass and I am currently still under the last station where the button was, tidying up cables when I hear the familiar sound of police sirens. My first thought was, that can't be what I think it is. There was no system in the closet. The sirens are getting much louder so I pop up from under the station just in time to see two cop cars come screeching to a halt in front of the store. Oh crap, I'm in trouble. Luckily, the owner was much more curious than I was and was already at the front door. She walked outside and one of the officers came over the loudspeaker. Don't move! Okay! The second cop had gotten out of his vehicle and was standing beside it ready to draw his sidearm. Who are you? We got a report of a robbery in progress at this address. I'm the owner of this business? There is no robbery going on. Who called you? At this point, the first officer gets out of his vehicle and approaches the owner, cop 2 still standing at the ready. The cop and the owner talk for a few minutes and finally he signals cop 2 that it's okay. Cop 2 approaches and all three come inside. At this point, I want to crawl into my tool bag and hide because I know this happened because of that dang button. Cop 1 explains that an automated system called 911 saying robbery in progress at current address and they needed to take a look around to verify everything was cool. Cop 2 takes a look around as Cop 1 checks with dispatch. Apparently, the system was calling every couple of minutes stating the same thing. I explained what most likely happened and asked if it's okay for me to trace the wire I left in the ceiling. By this time, Cop 2 comes back with an all clear and Cop 1 says he will contact dispatch and let them know he's remaining on site till we can find what's making the 911 call. Cop 2 takes off and I start tracing this wire, thank god for wire tone probes. I scamper back up to the wire, hook up my tone box, and try to see exactly where this wire is going. Two ladder climbs later and I find the wire is going next door to another business, thankfully owned by the same owner, but the other business was run by her son. A half dozen ladder climbs later, I find the wire running to a locked metal box in the ceiling above the network closet in the second business. 
Thankfully, the key was hanging in the lock. I know, real secure. So I pop it open and hit the kill switch. Cop 1 checks in with dispatch about five minutes later, and they say calls have stopped. Thank God. The owner apologized for the trouble and I do the same. I kept saying sorry the whole time I was tracing the wire. I think the cop was tired of hearing it as he verified with dispatch, asked the owner to sign some paperwork and took off. The nightmare was over and I asked the owner what she wanted done with the alarm system. She asked if I knew how it worked and how to reset it. I said I did not and it looked like it had been here a while. I could try and find info on it, but no guarantees. She opted to just have me pull it out. As I was removing it, I got curious to what phone line the system was even using, having been hiding in the ceiling for so long. How did it have a live number to use? So I grabbed my handy old fashioned landline phone and dial my cell phone. Turns out it was tied to the line her son's business was using as a fax line. The system was plugged into an outlet above the ceiling. I'm guessing this was installed a while back when it was another business at this location. Turns out the two offices were originally one large office and the owner had a wall installed in between. She kept the counters on her side so the button never got found. I replaced all the loose ceiling tiles on both businesses, finished the last station I was under when we got raided, finished up all the work left in the network closet and called it a day. It was interesting explaining why it took so long to do the call to my boss. I was branded the office criminal for about three weeks. Yay. <laughs> the worst part is that they knew they like they knew what it was, but it just didn't seem possible that it was still there and like who's not gonna push the button? Like <laughs> if you're already taking it out, you know, and it, it didn't appear to be attached to anything, that's beautiful. Just calling the cops on yourself as you do your job. <laughs> Congrats. I'd rather sleep under my car and face the bears. Sometimes, against our better judgment, we accept money from a customer and quickly regret it. Part of having a successful business is knowing when to say no, but sometimes we fail at that. Things went well with the initial install and training, at least it seemed that way. The trainer said the owner was a little odd and that the general manager quit two days into the training, though she didn't know why. But overall, she said the owner and other employees seemed to do well in training and things were running smoothly considering they had to find a new GM and several of the employees were also hired that week and not only had to learn new software, they had to learn everything else needed to operate a hotel. Things only got worse. Within about a month, all of the employees that had been trained had quit and the owner requested another few days of on-site training with his new employees and the new general manager he'd hired. During a nighttime training session, they hear a ruckus down a hall and hear a woman yelling for someone to leave them alone. They see the owner, drunk, stumbling down the hall into the lobby, and he leaves. An employee tells our trainer that the owner sometimes hits on women in the bar and gets turned down a lot. A couple of months go by nearly every week, the owner calls with some sort of crisis that only the software can solve for him. We learned that everyone who had been trained, including the new GM, has quit, so the owner is on his own again and he is crumbling under the pressure. His calls to us get more and more angry to the point that a couple times we have to tell him to take a couple hours to calm down before calling again. We'll let a customer vent, but we don't let them personally insult our staff. We don't hear from him for a couple of weeks, and then we get a certified letter in the mail from his lawyer. This letter outlines all the ways our software has harmed his business, run off his customers, and cost him hundreds of thousands of dollars in lost revenue. Before he takes this to court, he wants to give us the chance to refund the money he's paid us and reimburse him for the lost revenue. One of the admin staff hears it being discussed and asks who the customer is. She googles them and this is where the fun begins. The hotel has a website but the images are from the 1980s and look like they were scanned from old magazine ads. We're talking station wagons with wood trim, wood paneling in the rooms, etc. The trainer that had gone there twice said that the hotel looks nothing like that now. Another thing that turned up in Google was reviews. Oh, those reviews. We read page after page of reviews from two major sites and they were a comedy of failure. The one that sticks out the most and is a still a running joke in the office several years later went something like this. I'd rather sleep under my car and face the bears than sleep one more night in this place. 
There were a couple themes to these reviews. The first is that the hotel was filthy and never seemed to get cleaned. I'm not sure how many rooms had wet smelly carpet stains, but there were at least 10 reviews complaining about it. Of course, there were complaints that the hotel pictured on the website, while clean, didn't resemble the current state of the hotel. And finally, the other common theme, the aggressive drunk man that always seemed to be at the front desk or the bar. There were many complaints about him making unwanted advances, following women to their rooms, getting into loud arguments with people, etc. We didn't even bother to consult with our lawyers. We printed out about 25 pages of reviews, in color, and carefully highlighted the fun bits. We sent a copy of the letter they sent us, along with these reviews, by the fastest delivery service available, and never heard back from the lawyer or the customer. <laughs> yeah, uh, buddy, I don't think it's the software <laughs> that's ruining your business. It might be your alcohol problem, bud. Just, just saying, you know, people don't like to be harassed, and uh, clearly you're not going to do anything about it because you're the owner. Uh, the entire freaking staff, the entire staff that had ever been trained on that software was already gone like that's bad like you cannot be like oh it was the software that made them leave like <laughs> bruh nice try nice try hey all time for another story this is a recent one and i have retold it to a lot of people so our company hosts a lot from other companies and provide hardware software rdp citrix office support and people mainly mail in their issues and orders to our ticket system I was bored and had a look over our order queue and noticed one that seemed easy. My Citrix is really slow. Sure, I figured. I'll have a look, so I went into the profile on the host and clicked around checking folder sizes and whatnot. Oh, 600 megabyte space is what the customer has. In the first four folders, he has taken up space of around 2 gigs. I hook up my headset and call him up. Hi, this is Marentas from TechCo. I have had a look and I noticed you have a lot of things stored in your documents, pictures folder, as well as these folders. Okay, fix it. Pardon? Fix it. Remove what I don't need and fix it. Click. I put my headset back down and ponder before grinning like a madman. Most of the time, we don't do this, since it'll take time and we won't be able to help out on other things. And well, you know what, some people have on what they think is a private storage, but I had a plan to be a bit of a jerk. So I take a few moments, prep a folder on the shared network drive, and move everything there as backup. No real danger to fill anything up there. And sit back, sipping coffee for a while before hitting the delete button. As soon as I did, I threw out a message on Teams to my team. If client from Corp calls, transfer him to me. It takes a short while and I get to work on another ticket, closing down a few accounts before I get the number of someone flashing a call back to me. Welcome to IT Company, this is Marentes. How may I be of help? Where is my documents? I had a bill for larger Corp! Well, sir, it's on the shared network drive and only with you able to access it. I removed it from your Citrix session so you wouldn't have issues with the long login times. Why can't you just remove the things I don't need? Because if I did, sir, I would have to look at every file in all your folders and make a judgment myself. I know some folders are okay, but the Vacation Photos 2008 is one I'd remove since it's not work related. I'm sure you have a better chance to see what you need and not. Client is silent for a short while. Thank you. Hangs up. I close the ticket and go about my day. Now, we have a ticket grading system 1 to 10 on satisfaction rate from clients with the ability to comment. I get a notification of him putting one 10 out of 10 comment. He helped me get a lot of old family pictures I had forgotten about back. Feels good to be a jerk sometimes. TLDR, move the client's profile to file server and save photos of a vacation by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> oh, this person was so helpful. <laughs> like, thank you, sir. You helped me get back these photos that shouldn't be on here. How did they manage to have several gigs on something they only had megabyte space for? I don't I don't understand how that's possible, but then again, I don't work with these systems or anything, so maybe that just makes sense to other people. But no wonder it was slow. They had a whole daggum file full of pictures from their vacation. <laughs> what the heck? 
<laughs> uh, at least they weren't mean about it. You know, they could have been mean about the snarky response to their demand that didn't make any sense. Just like, just go through my stuff and you should somehow know what I need and don't need and just delete off the stuff I don't need. It's not how, it's not how that works. But okay. Anyway, that is going to wrap it up for today's video. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and drop a like and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Really quickly, I'd like to thank my patrons. Up on the screen, you should see my face palmers and my crazy case. <laughs> thank you all so much for your support in that way. If you are interested in becoming a patron, checking out the original post from today's video, or sending me an email for possible inclusion in a future video, all of that information is in the description box, so be sure to check it out. And I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye!